For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Titus 2.13, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about a Christian of no importance, of no value. A Christian that grew up in the Roman Catholic Church until an age that his parents said, you can, you can leave, you can do what you want to do. I grew up with Mary, I grew up with all the figurines, the idols, and I never knew God. A way through a church is not knowing God. For Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I grew up in a religion where Jesus is still nailed to the cross. And yet today I have a Jesus that is seated at the right hand of the Father. I have a Jesus according to what the gospel is, that he died for our sins. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day. Jesus died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. As a young boy, I grew up in a religion where Jesus was not buried. And he never did resurrect from the grave because he still nailed on that cross. I don't know how young I was in that religion, but I knew when I got to the age of 12, I left it. I was lost. Even inside the religion, I was lost. And there have been some few times in my life I know without the absence of God in my life, I would have died and gone to hell. Being a Catholic of St. Mary's Parish in New London, Connecticut, under no authority of Mary in the Pope, I would have died and gone to hell. I didn't even know who Jesus was. I violated the law. Many a times I hurt my mother. I made her sad. I made her worry. I made her cry. I disobeyed my mother. And the Bible says, children, obey your parents. That's in the commandments. As a lawbreaker of not being a decent son that God has prescribed me to be, I was a sinner. And no priest can avail me of sins by saying a prayer. And since when did prayer become a burden for sins? As I grew up, I became more and more of a sinner. I rebelled more against God. My sins multiplied. I committed acts I wouldn't even dare tell you. But acts that are vile and disgusting are not to be seen by God because they are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. To see the day that I became saved. April 21st, 1987. When I got down on my knees, I went to God. No church. I went to Jesus Christ. No works. And I came to Jesus as a filthy, rotten sinner that's going to hell. And I was. Both the filthy, rotten sinner and going to hell. With Catholic under my belt. And many years of no church. I've heard some people say here, oh, I go to church. Is that better than Jesus Christ? Which church do you go to? There's multiple churches. 
Well, your church of terrorists, I can show you another church in the Bible that's wrong, according to the Bible, and probably show where your church is wrong, according to the Bible. Your church is made up of sinners. There are hypocrites in the church just as there are hypocrites in your job. For God so loved the world that he gave his son, he didn't give church. So are you telling me that God can't save anybody where there's no church in the world? You have applied rules and regulations and burdens that man cannot meet. And yet the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. And that son, Jesus Christ, is preached. And we're not in church. And you're hearing the gospel. And you still cannot say, I listened to a preacher at the farmer's market in Daytona Beach expect to get into heaven. That's not going to work. You can't say that this guy preached to us every Saturday morning, and that's why I'm going to heaven. I can't save you. You have to do the same thing I did April 21st, 1987. You've got to come to Jesus Christ as a hell-bound sinner, without hope, without mercy, and without God. Whatever church is under your belt, And you probably don't even know what the biblical definition of the church is. For most Americans, you don't have an idea what the church is. The media doesn't even know what a Christian is. They call a Christian assembly ones that killed Christians. You've got to leave all that religion to come to Jesus Christ as I did, 18 years old. You got to come to Jesus Christ as you are, a hell-bound sinner. And you cannot get any of the Holy Spirit, you cannot get any of the blessings of God until you come to Jesus Christ by faith. You can't say, well, God, show me. He's not obligated. Because you've got to come to Jesus Christ by faith. You come to me and say, well, I'm a good person. Uh, you failed. You're not. There are none good. No, not one. Again, I go to church. Show me in the Bible. Going to church will save your soul and make you okay. Didn't Jesus have a church? Didn't he have an assembly of people that followed him, 12? And wasn't Judas, who Satan entered, was he in that church? And would you say because Judas went to church, he's saved? I tell you, you are lying. Judas was among the assembly of the disciples. He had the power to heal. He had the power to cast out devils. He walked and talked and lived with Jesus for three and a half years going to church. And he died and went to hell. So will you. Would you say Peter was in church? as Judas and Peter was closer to Jesus than Judas when it came to the intimate important lives of Jesus the Bible records Peter James and John Peter subject on Peter minus James and John saw more works than the disciples would you say 
Oh, Peter went to church, he's saved. And yet, he denied knowing, he denied three times about Jesus Christ. Well, you say Peter's going to hell? Nope, he got right. He left that assembly and came to Jesus Christ as his Savior. He came to the blood of Jesus Christ to save him. Something that Judas didn't do. And even Judas, he went to the priest and said, I have betrayed the innocent blood. But you know what Judas' problem was? He went to the priest. He didn't go to Jesus. He, are, we are recorded in the Bible. Peter spoke to Jesus and said, Jesus, you know I love you. You know I do. Three times, you know I repented of that sin of the night. You know, Lord God, it's all about you. But like you, Judas went to the men priests and he lost his soul. The devil, through Judas, went to the priests and he lost his soul. And you're going to stand here and say, well, priests, the church, I'm okay. You're not okay. You see, until a boy was 12 years old, he was in the church. He was baptized as an infant. Had I died before 18 years old, had I died before 1987 with Catholic under my belt, I would have died and gone into hell. There would have been, there is no purgatory. Yet the gospel is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he arose again the third day according to scripture. Where is church attendance in the gospel? Which church? Baptist, Catholic, Lutheran, Protestant? What? There's all kinds. You tell me that God will respect all churches no matter what they teach. I'm here to tell you by Bible stands that Islam is a church. It's a group of people. You see, we think of church as wood, metal, nails, glass, stained glass, statues. And that's not the church. The church are people who have been saved by the precious blood of the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That's the church. And I'll tell you what the church is one day. I don't know when. But if it, this event were to happen while we are alive, when the trump of God blows, you'll find out what the church is when they're gone. When your friends or family suddenly disappear, leaving their clothes and guts, that's the church. And then you who, who are in your religion and in your church membership will still be here. You'll be left behind. Going to church makes you a holy resident of hell. A holy baloney. Because it's not by church, by Jesus who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There is salvation in no other. You'll find that religion in 2 Corinthians 11, Satan is in charge of most of the pulpits. And we are in a church age today called Laodicea. And the book of Revelation says Jesus is standing outside the church. So I go to church where Jesus is absent from while Satan's inside. That's not the means. For you to be okay with God, you got to come to a man. You got to come to the man. You got to come to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God. Salvation rests upon one. The sinless 
virgin born, scripture fulfilling God, Jesus Christ, the beloved Son. God did not send a church to save your soul. God did not say, be a good person, I'll let you into heaven. You can never, ever, ever, never, ever, never be like Jesus Christ to be accepted in God's. See, the law prescribes us to be sinners. And even as I speak to you today, a born-again, Bible-believing Christian by the Bible I am still a sinner. You see, the law, the first commandment, is God first all the time. God must be first every single time in your life for you to be good. And that was only fulfilled in Christ. Now, as myself and you, I know this morning you did not wake up with Jesus on your lips and your mind. Most of us woke up and said, oh, mighty snooze button, let me get more sleep. In order to be good by the Bible, God has to be first all the time. Now, there's nothing wrong with buying fruits and vegetables. But to put God first when it comes to buying that produce, did you say, God, is this good for me right now? Lord, is this the best watermelon you want me to have? See, putting God first with seeking God on what he wants in your life. And as you open up your wallet to pay the people, have you thanked God for giving you the money in this wallet, or do you thank your employer, or the fact is that you earned it? And this nation has forgot that God has blessed this nation. God has given us riches, and they're disappearing because this nation is replacing God. It is getting rid of the Bible. And instead of the Bible, they are picking up guns and shooting each other. They are popping pills and their minds are blown. And there are no answers outside the Bible. Putting God first. I fail at that and I'm a saved Christian. Before you turn that key in that ignition, do you pray for God for that journey? Do you realize that 75% of the drivers out there are on some kind of pill, drug, alcohol, and you're going to trust in nothing to get you to go where you're going? You are going to be in absence of God on the highways. That's a, that's a faithless step. And yet the Bible says God is to be first. And we failed that. And even as Christians, we do not repent of not putting God first in our lives. And it's a sin worthy to be repented of, including myself. As much as I do not put God first in my life, I don't repent of that as often as I should. But if you have never put your trust in finished work upon Jesus Christ, everything you do not put God first in is going against your account. Now with your account that you laid up with sins, that the bill will show up when you die, the lies, the theft, the adulteries, not putting God first. You can't pay for that bill. 
Because when you die, you can't reach for your wallet because your wallet's not going to be there. For the Bible says, as you were born of a baby, so shall you die. And babies are not born with credit cards and money. Even though they will clothe you in that casket, you are stark naked before God. And you have a bill that is due. It's called sin. And the wages of sin is death. But you do not have to die owing that bill. You can have that sin bill canceled, forgiven, and redeemed by Jesus Christ, where the Bible says, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Now notice when John the Baptist spoke, he said the sin. He did not say sins. He said sin. You are and I am accumulating sins every day. And you don't even know that you're sinning. The Bible says in Matthew 7, every idle word that you speak, you'll give an account of. You will give an account of everything that you said. Everything. Saved or lost. Every joke, every word, every telephone conversation. That yelling at that red light. Talking to your customer, talking to your employees, talking to your co-worker, talking to, talking, 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 talking. The Bible says you will give an account for every word. And when those words are lies, and they don't represent God in His holiness, they are sins. Now let's look at another one in the Bible. Matthew 5. Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her. People. In the eyes of God, you do not have to be in the act of sex to be an adulterer. You just got to think about it. So if you can think and be active as God's put in his word, your thoughts will be judged. You don't have to kill anybody, but you can think about it. And you'll be charged as a murderer. Oh, I'm going to kill my boss one day. You're charged with murder. Oh, look at that woman. Isn't she hot? You're charged with adultery. Well, should I take that $10 or should not take that $10? That's theft. Should I tell that customer that those strawberries are bad underneath? Or should I not tell her those strawberries are bad? That's deceiving. Your thoughts are sins. And you will be charged by your sins. Whether you say them, you do them, or you think them. And if you've never known Jesus Christ as your Savior, your sins are bounding up. Come on, children. Oh, my mom is so wicked. Oh, I'm going to move out. Oh, I wish. Yeah, thinking that, and God's charged you with not honoring your mother and father. That's in the law. That is a sin. When you sit in your room pouting and talking against your parents when they're not there, God has heard you. The eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good. You are sinning against your parents. Add that to the list. I wish that man would shut up. I wish he'd go away. That is sinning against the word of God. You're building up your sin list. And God will check it twice. And he'll find you naughty and never nice. You know what naughty is in the Bible according to Jeremiah or Ezekiel? 
Naughty is this profane, wicked, gross. Naughty is when you find a bad strawberry, it's, it's gone beyond its date. And that's you in the eyes of God without Jesus Christ. You got to get off your high horse and realize that you are a sinner in the eyes of God without Jesus Christ. I don't care if you commit this sin over that sin. You're not as bad as that person. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All are vile without Jesus Christ. You see, there is only one sin that will put you in hell. And those that are listening are, are hoping I don't mention their sin. But this is a sin that many, most people in this world commit, are doing, and have done, and has got them into the gates of hell. That one sin that will put you into hell is rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Because you're a sinner, you need a payment for your sins, and you can't do it, and church attendants can't do it. How does church erase lying? As far as we know, Adolf Hitler could go into church. You think he's in the gates of heaven? Church ain't going to get you to heaven. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You're not good. You're not terrific. You're not wonderful. You are a vile, wicked sinner in the eyes of a holy God. There are skeletons in your closet somewhere. Why don't you let the Bible and Jesus Christ unlock that closet door and wash away all those skeletons? So when you die, when your bill shows up for sin, you can say, sorry, sorry, death. It's under the blood of Jesus Christ. Sorry, Satan. It's under the righteousness of Jesus Christ. That when you approach God, and God said, hey, what about your sins? Holy God, Holy Father, here's the account. It has been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thou shalt enter into glory. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy. And that's done by the finished work of Jesus Christ. I'm not asking you to give us money. I am not asking you to come join our church. I am not going to ask you to say this prayer. I am not going to have you fall down and kiss my feet. I am not going to ask you to worship any of the people who are here. I'm going to ask you and tell you, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. When have you heard that in your church? You walk up to your church leader and say, church leader, whatever title he's got. And say, church leader, I am now going to put my finished faith upon.